Although Helmet Zemo did his best to tear our heroes apart in Captain America Civil War, the Avengers are back together again for Avengers Endgame. Well, what's left of them at least, and we couldn't be more excited. This may be a happy reunion for Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, but it's also possible they won't be hanging out for very long. Are the Avengers truly better together, or could splitting up be a new strategy? Marvel movie fans know our heroes tend to be their best when they're teamed up with one another. The first family of Marvel movies is definitely the Avengers, but things got a little tense in the events of Captain America Civil War. Steve Rogers tried to smooth over an enormous and emotional betrayal by presenting a genius billionaire with a flip phone, and somehow it worked. While Tony Stark and Steve Rogers took a break from punching each other, they didn't stop being heroes, much to the dismay of Pepper Potts. Captain America went undercover, completing missions with the help of Black Widow and Falcon. Meanwhile, Tony tried his best to bring up the next generation of heroes, namely the desperate for affection Peter Parker, and in Spider-Man Homecoming, it was mentioned that Tony had created a new Captain America shield. Clearly, Tony hadn't given up on his old friend and knew that the two of them would end up reconciling at some point. Still, fans have been excited about seeing the reunion of these two characters. When they first met in The Avengers, they didn't think much of each other, to say the least, but they have earned each other's respect both professionally and personally. And it's great to see that's endured despite their differences. Although we were wondering just what would happen between them, the Avengers Endgame trailer makes it pretty clear they've squashed the beef between them. There's even a nice moment where they reaffirm that they still still trust each other. But just because our heroes are together in their hearts doesn't mean they won't split up for practical reasons. In one in-game trailer, it looked as though Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor were going up against Thanos on their own without their friends in sight. Not only do our heroes have to take on the Mad Titan, but most fans believe they're also going to have to travel through time in order to collect the Infinity Stones. That's no easy task, and it might make sense for them to split up into teams in order to get things done quickly and efficiently. After all, for most of their MCU history, our heroes have been reacting to the terrible, awful, no-good events around them. But Thanos is caught up in his real-life Stardew Valley, which means our heroes have a head start. The more they can accomplish before Thanos catches on that they're up to something, the better. With that in mind, dividing into teams could help them maximize efficiency and capitalize on the element of surprise. But who's going to be on whose team? We have members missing, new characters introduced, and old familiar faces with ludicrous haircuts. Looking at you, Hawkeye. Before we talk about our fantasy Avengers Endgame teams, let's quickly go over who's still around. It's been quite some time since Infinity War was in theaters, and a lot of players have been benched, at least for now. In the mid credit scene of Ant-Man and the Wasp, we learn that Hank Pym, Hope Van Dyne, and Janet Van Dyne all perished in the decimation. The Avengers are down Vision and Scarlet Witch, but there's still Tony Stark, Thor, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Natasha Romanoff, Rhodey, and Clint Barton. Of the Wakandans we saw in Infinity War, Okoye and M'Baku are left, and of the Guardians of the Galaxy, only Rocket Raccoon and Nebula remain. A heavy hitter unaffiliated with the current heroes is Carol Danvers, and then we have Pepper Potts, Valkyrie, Wong, and Happy Hogan all still around. We aren't saying we expect to see Pepper Potts suit up and start fighting crime, but we're sure she'll remind Tony how much she wishes he had stopped being an Avenger. Obviously, the big goal is to undo the Decimation, an event that wiped out half of all life in the universe, and we're sure they're going to want to punch Thanos right in the face at some point. Hopefully they do so with enough strength to take him down, because the universe definitely isn't safe when he's around. Defeating Thanos and undoing the Decimation are the major goals, so now let's look at how our heroes are going to get there using what seems to be the most popular theory. The idea is this. Our heroes are going to travel back in time, likely through the Quantum Realm, and get a hold of the Infinity Stones before Thanos can. Some fans believe they'll claim the stones for themselves, while others think they'll make copies in order to harness the stone's power. We've seen set photos and pieces of the endgame trailer which make it look as though our heroes are going to have to go back to the Battle of New York. And that's definitely a smart place to start since it'll put them in close proximity to three of the Infinity Stones. In the Avengers, we saw Loki use the Mind Stone which he had received from Thanos. He held this in a scepter in order to obtain the Space Stone which was contained in the Tesseract. 
The third stone is one we didn't learn about until we saw the movie Doctor Strange years later. We found out that the Time Stone would have been accessible during this time via the New York Sanctum Sanctorum. So that means heading back to the Battle of New York would put our heroes near three Infinity Stones, which seems like a good starting point. We've seen some of our heroes at the site of this iconic battle via some endgame set photos. These show Scott Lang, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and Bruce Banner seemingly revisiting this historic fight, and since it looks like actor Mark Ruffalo is wearing a motion capture suit, hopefully that means we're going to get to see a little more of the improved Hulk. The new Hulk still smashes as hard as the original, but now he's able to kind of talk and discriminate about what he should and maybe should not smash. Hey, we'll take what we can get at this point. Scott Lang wasn't at the original Battle of New York, which further suggests that this time it might involve some time trickery. If you take a closer look at the photos, though, you can see our heroes wearing devices on their wrists. Some fans theorize these may be used to contain the power of the Infinity Stones, while others believe they have much more simple explanations. It could be that these devices utilize some classic Tony Stark nanotech, and they're meant to let our heroes toggle between their classic costumes and those fancy new suits we saw in the Endgame trailer. Based on these photos, it looks like the heading back to New York team is going to be Tony, Steve, Bruce, and Scott. The three members of the Avengers have a long history together, and we know that Scott Lang will pretty much do anything Captain America asks him to. As far as the Power Stone, it'd probably be safest to grab it from Xandar, where it was left for safekeeping. We saw this exchange take place in Guardians of the Galaxy and learned that Thanos destroyed Xandar to obtain the Power Stone in Infinity War. Pointing this out would probably make the Nova Corps much more likely to hand it over. In the latest trailer, we saw a group of heroes taking off in a spaceship piloted by none other than Captain Marvel herself. In the ship, we also got to see Natasha Romanoff, Thor, Rocket, Rhodey, and Steve Rogers. Carol Danvers, Thor, and Rocket are familiar with space travel, so it makes sense they'd be involved in this space mission. There are also a few more stones they could possibly be working on collecting while they're out there in the universe, right? The Reality Stone, also known as the Aether, was once in the possession of the Asgardians before they handed it over to the Collector. Having Thor with them means it'd be easy enough to intercept before it ends up in his collection and ultimately in the hands of Thanos. In one trailer, we saw Clint Barton illuminated by a red glow, which reminded us of the Reality Stone. It seems like the most troublesome stone to obtain by far is going to be the Soul Stone. Even Thanos had to struggle in order to take possession of that one. Well, for at least a couple seconds before he threw Gamora off of a cliff. He may be a terrible monster, but we really have to admire his decisiveness. I mean, really, he's a good leader. Unlike the other Infinity Stones, though, the Soul Stone doesn't really have a long and confusing history in the MCU. In Infinity War, we learned that it had been hanging out on Vormir, being guarded by Red Skull, but the threat isn't Red Skull himself, rather the demands of the Soul Stone. It actually forced Thanos to sacrifice something he loved in order to possess it, and we have to imagine and it'll demand a similar sacrifice from our heroes. We have a feeling they might get into a bit of a debate about who's supposed to be sacrificed. The idea of sacrifice was a big deal in Infinity War, and we'd be surprised to see if this doesn't carry over into Endgame. To circle back on the relationship between Tony and Steve, there was once a time in the Avengers when Steve accused Tony of being unwilling to sacrifice himself for others. We think Tony has proven this isn't true for both himself and Steve, and it would make sense for them to encounter the Soul Stone together. Another hero we haven't seen much of in the trailers is Nebula. She and Gamora had a, well, let's say complicated relationship throughout their lives. Something to do with Thanos dismembering Nebula when she'd lose to Gamora in order to inspire to fight harder or something like that, don't really remember. Not a great motivational technique or a way to promote sibling bonding, but anyway, the two of them have patched things up and Nebula seems upset to learn of Gamora's demise at the hands of Thanos. Nebula is very savvy when it comes to space, and we've seen her and Tony working together in previous Endgame trailers. It makes sense that if any of the remaining heroes are going to face the Soul Stone, it should really be Tony, Steve, and Nebula. But which one of them ends up being sacrificed is something that remains to be seen. All of the remaining heroes have their own strengths and weaknesses, and it'll be interesting to see how they pair up. It makes sense for our heroes to split up into different configurations and acquire three Earthbound Stones. Tony Stark is at his most powerful and influential on Earth, but he has been in space before. Steve Rogers is also an Earthbound hero, but we could see him approaching the Soul Stone from a storytelling perspective. We can't imagine the Hulk is eager to head back into space following Infinity War, and Scott Lang also seems like he's more useful when he's utilizing familiar Earthen technology. 
Of course, we know Nebula, Captain Marvel, Rocket, and Thor are no strangers to the skies, but they could use some help from those back on Earth, don't you think? We're looking forward to seeing Clint Barton and Natasha Romanoff fighting together again, and it looks like Rhodey's going to end up coming along for the ride to do something. So tell us, what do you think about the idea that the Avengers may split up for strategic reasons in Avengers Endgame? Are they better together, or would this be a smart move? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section, and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at CBR. Thanks for watching.